Hey folks, welcome to Market Technical Analysis by InTheMoneyStocks.com, your leaders in pure technical analysis, avoiding all that Wall Street hype. Today, Monday, March 31st, 2008. Well, being the 31st of March, we all know what this means. The quarter, uh, the first quarter of 2008 has come to a close as the market closed today at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. And uh, many people speculated today about some different market activity going on. Was there going to be window dressing? Was there going to be a, a window breaking? And I'll explain the differences there so everyone understands. Essentially what goes on with these mutual funds and different funds and hedge funds is that the quarterly statement has to go out now that the quarter has closed. And what they want to do is they want to show that they participated in any variety of either stocks that ran or declined on the short side, depending on which way the market was headed. So. If, they, if the market rallied huge and the fund happened to be maybe not taking advantage of that as much, right into the last day of the quarter, they would buy stocks that ran big to show that they, they were involved, even though they really had no you know whatsoever involvement in the move until buying it today. Uh, and that happens every quarter, guys. Every quarter is called window dressing. And on the, on the downside, window breaking, which was mentioned on, uh, in the media, was, was basically the idea that the market dropped so much that many funds would actually short stocks today, possibly driving down the market um, by taking those short positions. Now, Nick and I, uh, you know, my partner and I at InTheMoneyStocks.com, we basically said, no, it's not, you know, don't look for that to happen. Uh, most of these funds had huge margin loans or, or 10 to 1 margin, and, you know, they've been reduced to 4 to 1 beast based on market conditions. There's just too many issues out there that's not allowing these funds to, to do that kind of stuff and pull that kind of maneuver. So maybe it happened a little bit, but it wasn't going to affect the market. And you guys know how what we feel. We believe in the charts. Charts are number one, uh, pattern, price, time, and volume. You, tell, you show us that, we'll read a chart any day of the week, any chart, doesn't matter what it is, and be able to tell you which way the stock will head. That's our expertise. We don't care really what the news is out there. It's only a, a confirmation of the chart pattern is the news. So in any case, we basically saw what we continued to see last week. The, and the beauty of it is the longer we consolidate here, folks, and you're looking at the intraday, and that's the intraday 10-minute chart of the E-minis, the ESM8 contract, uh, the longer we do what we did today and last week, um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of last week, the, the bigger and the more powerful the next move will be. It's always the way it is. The longer you consolidate, it's like it's like bringing something to a boil or bringing something, you know, com putting more and more pressure on on, a, on some sort of ball. It's going to eventually explode. You know, you just crush it too much, it's going to pop and go everywhere. And that's essentially what the market is setting up for, we, we believe, from the chart analysis. So let's start out with the intraday chart here first. Number one, you can basically see that most of the day we trended up and nicely up. You can actually see the little bit of a trend here developing, and I'm going to draw this in all the way until this little bit of a topping tail. And so let's see if I can draw this in for the most part. There you see the parallel lines here basically, and I do, didn't quite draw them exact, but nonetheless, you can see the moves. We basically trended right along the upper end, then we came in, touched the lower end, which happened to be right around the uh, 50 moving average and the 20. We then took another bounce higher on a nice candle of of, uh, of a buy program there, um, then sold off again, and then trended up again, sold off again, and you guys get the picture here. So we stayed in a nice trend most of the day, up and down, up and down out of this trend, in this trend I should say, until we basically topped out right here around 130. And then we started to see a little sell activity coming in the market, and this might have been where people were adjusting their portfolios going into options X. In fact, you saw the biggest candle here of the day, which was a sell candle, late in the day, right before 4 o'clock, and it actually had some sizable volume. These, This is the uh, 350 to 4, 4 o'clock candle, which basically the market's closed, and then the futures trade to 415. So the next candle, which was the second biggest of the day, was from 4 o'clock to 410. And you know those are obviously positions people positioning or funds positioning themselves ahead of the start of the quarter. Whether or not they had to unload positions into into the end of the quarter to show they weren't you know they were doing their window dressing, I don't know. But nonetheless, it didn't really have a huge effect on the market. But the one thing what you can see here is we came down to the lower end of that channel, we consolidated and then broke lower. You had another little push back to the higher end of the trend, and notice that. That's the key to notice, is that the trend now becomes resistance on the upside, and when we tried to push up, we got to the high right there, into that bottom end of the channel, and then sold off hard again into the close. But ultimately, guys, any way you cut it, the market still ended positive. We had the Dow up 46.5 points, the NASDAQ up 18, and the S&P up 7.5. And, and many of you guys would say, well, is this still consolidation? Well, yeah, really it is, because volume 
was which is a key component of consolidation you want to look for that pause or pullback on the volume still extremely light we basically did the volume we did on Friday which was Thursday's volume and so forth of late last week just to give you guys an idea here um, look at this alright here's the consolidation start right here that's basically we're sitting right on this 20 moving average which as of now is a beautiful chart now it could change tomorrow it could change the next day but as of now the setup is for another blast off to the higher side again off this large move up you have a strong move up with a high angle a very steep angle if you were to draw a you know if you were to use a protractor here and take the angle right here that's a steep angle then you have consolidation which again is a smaller angle which is would be this angle coming down beautifully enough right into that 20 moving average which is what we pointed out uh, to look for in the consolidation pattern and now you're starting to pause around here now is this setting up for another blast off we'll know in a day or two that's all there is to it we really had let's see one two three four five days of consolidation oftentimes you get six days of consolidation in a blast off or seven days in a blast off so we're gonna have to really focus in here Tuesday Wednesday is gonna be key in our book to see whether or not this happens all right so again notice the it's, it's all about angles and geometry and and calculations and I know it seems like oh great I do I really want to do all this math but hey listen if you can figure out which way the charts are going by doing a little few calculations and just basically at this point we don't even do the, necessarily have to do the exact calculations of angles you just start to recognize it because your eye becomes so trained and that's what we try to do for our institutional partners and our and our private consulting uh, partners as well which by the way no one's excluded from that anyone can can sign up for that and and, and really get one-on-one -on -one tutoring with us and try to learn this stuff it's on the website so, so feel free but in any case long story short you had that on the daily chart and we are looking at the daily uh, SPY chart again look at the volume on the pullback here's the pullback look notice the volume okay really starting even a little bit before but how light has that volume been over the last few days I mean it has been non-existent comparatively and uh, and here I'm just trying to get my mouse to focus in on that but it's really just down there and you had all this big volume over here which was the beginning of that push then the pullback and so forth right into the 50 moving average and then no volume so volume is a key component of any move out there and we're not seeing it here as we consolidate which is a good thing consolidation is usually a, a flat to pullback type position on light light volume and then once you what you want to see is you want to see the next push or whatever main push there is it has to be on large volume all right. If we tr trickle higher or lower on light volume, you know we're still not going to know the exact move here. But again, as we mentioned, we are expecting that move up. Okay, let's look at the Nasdaq, fun old Nasdaq here. And again, you see it beautifully. I mean, if this is a teaching a course, this is the type of chart we'd want to. You know, as long as we do get the blast off, we're expecting. This is the type of chart we would use when we're teaching our webinar or seminars or going with our private consulting partners because it's just so beautiful. You have a nice little double bottom here. You have a possible W pattern formation right here. And then the blast off, the small pullback, which is consolidation, or a possible V pattern, which is the same thing. It's all the same. And right into the 20 moving average. So you blast it all the way up to the 50, pull back to the 20. Will we go a little lower? Yeah, there's a possibility. A lot of times the markets will try to fake the amateurs out and take trickle it a little bit below that 20, making them think it's going to break down. In which case, oftentimes, as soon as the shorts, or I mean, as soon as the amateurs move out and say, oh boy, this is going back to the lows, then we see a move back up. So that's why we look for new position, uh, new support areas, and you really want to focus in on those somewhere right around these lows in here. And it's a little tough to see now that I've got all these other lines in there. Let me take that away. All right. There we go. So we see the lows here, low, 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 low. We only had that one tick below, which was uh, actually a nice green candle as we gapped down and pushed back up, um, which equaled this low. So there's the next low right here. This is where you, you'd rather the market not break there. Uh, I, I'm even hoping that it actually does settle here and make another blast off over the next couple days. But then the next angle would be right down here. You come down, test that level down here. It's very possible we break and go lower. Oftentimes, you don't get triple bottoms in a market. Double bottoms are phenomenal for bounces. Triple bottoms can often be fake outs with a little bounce and then a break lower. So we'll have to continue to monitor that. All right. But anyway, you cut it. Nice setup here as we continue in the light volume trading action. Now, what about stocks, guys? Stocks, stocks. So we always talk, we try to throw in a little bit of stocks when we have time. Not a whole lot going on today either. We mentioned the nuance. NUAN um, interesting chart here as it did settle back above that 50 moving average it's one that we're watching obviously and it's a fun trading stock so we always keep an eye on that one it has big moves in any rally it always has a nice move up and it seems to be in this channel 
you know notice the channel between the 200 moving average here and the 50 down here as it just keeps on bouncing back whichever way it breaks out it could be a nice little breakout there um, and uh, also you have a gap here that got filled which is a good sign as well so and there's a gap fill from this point which was a gap up here you had it all come all the way down here and fill the gap but never break really any lower so it had a nice gap fill all right, uh, other stocks, let's touch on Google. Google was negative most of the day, but actually came to back to go positive by the end of the day. You can see that nice move up. Baidu, however, was weak. Asia goes down last night. Uh, China continues to be under a lot of pressure, the Shanghai Index, so watch those. Anyways, come join the stock, stock uh, chat. It's a stock chat and E-mini in one. We call out both. There's two moderators on the mic. People can type questions. You can ask any questions you want. We'll get to you guys. And uh, we continue to trade the markets in this interesting trading environment. Swing trade alerts. Can't stress how good those are going right here. We got Dell as a long. Uh, we're already in it. We're going to exit it shortly, so be aware of that. Have a wonderful day, guys. We'll talk to you soon.